How's it going everybody? I'm Luther and Miranda here and today we just want to take some time to talk to, with you guys about uh, the Kingdom. Um, we're on this Kingdom journey and it's really awesome. It's opened our eyes up to so many different things and we want to share some of the things that we're learning, that we're discovering, um, just to kind of bring you guys along with us. So today we just want to focus on just what is a Kingdom? Um, you know, what is God's Kingdom? Um, so many times we see this term uh, thrown around in religious circles and we really don't get a sense of what God's kingdom is, what, you know, what's really going on. A lot of times we think it's, it's just the church or it's just uh, some aspect of ministry, but it's so much more than that. Um, actually, I'll, I'll let you take over and you can share and then I'll, I'll jump in. Okay. So the kingdom is the focus of what Jesus had. He always talked about the kingdom. If you go back and you look at all the parables, he's always referencing the kingdom. It was what he came to do. He came to bring the kingdom. He came to, um, to get our mindsets changed and shifted to show us the truth of the kingdom. And sometimes if we're not careful in, um, in religion in different areas, we lose touch of what the kingdom really is and what Jesus came to do and what he came to restore back to us. Um, so we're going to take a few moments and we're just going to talk to you about the truth of the kingdom. Um, you hear kingdom so much in church and the, like Luther said, the word is just tossed around, it's thrown around um, without a whole lot of depth and meaning and purpose to it. And we want to bring back that depth and the meaning and the purpose to what a kingdom really is and what Jesus um, came to do for us. Um, first of all, um, a kingdom is not a religion, it is a country. A kingdom is a country, it's a place, it's a territory, it's a region. It has a governing body um, over a group of, of people, and it's a governing place. A kingdom was never intended to be a religion. It was never, Jesus never brought it into a religious atmosphere or component to it. But he always um, just kept talking about the kingdom and what it is. Um, well, like Miranda said, um, this was one of the things that, as I studied the kingdom, that I kind of struggled with. Um, because just uh, being being so used to um, a religious system or structure, if you will, um, I had to think in the kingdom as a literal government. Um, you have to think of it in, in a governmental terms, governmental structure, um, because that's really what it is. Um, Jesus came to bring the government, the structure, the systems of heaven to earth for us. Um, and it's that's not just, um, how do I say it? It's not just... Uh, so we can get to heaven someday it's because there's work expected of us there, there's something for us to do and that's that's a whole nother topic um, for probably another time um, but you have to think of the kingdom as a literal government it has its own structure its own order its own law um, its own territories um, and then as, as we're emissaries and ambassadors of that kingdom then that places uh, places certain demands on us well, like Jesus said, um, when they had asked, how should we pray? And he said that my kingdom come and my will be done. So our job is to bring the kingdom back to earth. That's what we're here to do. We're not just here to just wait around for a rapture to take place and for us to go to heaven. But our job is to bring the kingdom of God back to earth. And it means living a whole nother way. You're set apart. We're in this world, but we're not of the world. And we're set apart. People should look at us and know there's something different about them. Just the way you operate, the way you respond to people, how you handle situations, what your look on life. It should be different. And that's what sets us apart. But our mission is to bring the kingdom of the earth back to this earth. We are to rule and reign. And it's not our will, but it's his will that is to be done. But if you look at a kingdom, a kingdom, it is a country and all kingdoms have a king. And they all have a set of laws or principles. Same thing in the kingdom of God. Um, there's taxation systems. Um, it has an army, an army of angels. We are not the army, but there is an army of angels. We have rulership, we don't have rituals, and we have stewardship, we don't have ownership. And we have dominion over the entire earth, but we do not have dominion over mankind. We are here to dominate and to rule and reign, but we don't dominate over people. We don't rule over people, but we have authority over situations and circumstances just not over people. And I think that that uh, not ruling over people part, you see that so often in the world and its systems that uh, to get ahead you have to uh, you have to be over so many people. You have to have control over people. You have to uh, 
um, do things to manipulate people to get them to do what you want them to do. And that's how the world operates. That's not how the kingdom was ever designed to operate. Um, we were sent, uh, or commissioned if you will, um, when Jesus came, he died for us, he redeemed us, cleansed us, sent the Holy Spirit. Um, that's to equip us for work. Um, that's, that's really where a lot of people end at. But really, if you look at scripture, if you look at what we're supposed to be doing here until we go to heaven, there's an assignment. Each one of us has a unique, separate, individual assignment that only we can do. Um, and that's where we're to have dominion. Um, if you're called to, to ministry, great, have dominion in that area. Not over people, but over your gifting. Um, if you're called to business, have dominion in that area. Um, again, not over people, but over your gifting. Um, whether it's, that, that translates to so many different areas, you know, fashion, art, media, whatever, um, whatever God has you to do. Raising children, uh, building a family, have dominion. Um, again, not lording it over people, but just exercising excellent excellence in your gift for God's glory. Um, Jesus came to model for us what it was like to live in the kingdom. Um, in many examples, he not only taught it, but he showed it. He walked it out. He did many miracles. He had authority over the winds and the waves, and in many ways, and over sickness and disease, and even life and death, he had dominion over all of it. He came to model for us how we could actually live in the kingdom, how to operate and how to live in there. So not only did he teach it, but he walked it out. And that's what we're here to do, is we're here to walk out what we're learning. That's what, as kingdom citizens, that's what everybody should be doing. We don't just sit and learn it, but we begin to walk it out. We apply what we learn, and we begin to walk it out. And then we teach others as we learn. And as we walk it out, we can therefore teach others. And that's what we're desiring to do, is to teach you guys what we have put to practice, what we've applied in our life, and what God has done in us, even in just the past few months, in the past year, and where, we, where we've even gone. Yeah, um, you know, for us, we're, we kind of feel like we're the new kids on the block as it comes to the kingdom. But that shouldn't, that shouldn't stop you from, from teaching what you know. Um, you look at religion, religion always says, well, you're not ready, you don't know enough, you're not an expert in this, so you can't do anything. And they kind of put you on hold and hold you back. That's, that's the religious system. You, know? you see so many people get, get burned up and used up by that. Um, but really, you know, when Jesus taught somebody, they would just go out and they would, they would share what they knew. And if you don't know, if, you know, if it's something's beyond you, then just be quiet about it. But, you know, if you had an experience with Christ, if you have um, a, a teaching, you know, it, when you sat under Jesus' feet, you would just go out and share. That's what the disciples did. They only sat with Jesus for three years. Um, if you look at it, about, you know, the fivefold gifts and different things. If Jesus is a master teacher, you get three years and you're off and running. And we have people who go to seminary, study theology. They're in school for five, seven years, and you just, this lifelong education thing, and they're still not out there. And that's a real shame. That's To me, that's missing what the kingdom is all about. So it's not about being an expert. It's not about being perfect. It's about going on a journey and sharing what you know and uh, just being real. I mean, that's, you know, nobody's above mistakes or reproach, but it's just about being real and, and sharing. So Jesus came. He came to clean us back. He came to restore us back to the place where... The Holy Spirit could rule and reign and we could get the kingdom back because that's what Adam lost in the garden. Adam lost that, that ruling power, you know, um, God had given him dominion in the garden. He ruled and reigned over it, but when he sinned, he lost it. He lost what he had had and he lost the kingdom. He came to cleanse us, to bring us back to the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit's there to help you, to walk with you. He will lead you to the and he's there to be your helper. So the Holy Spirit will walk with you through this journey. He will teach you right from wrong. He will show you what to do and how to respond. And it's a process. It's a journey in life. And I look at it as this is a journey of life. It's a fun journey. Learn as you go. Grow. And you'll look back and you'll say, wow, look at what God did in my life. Look at where he's brought me. Look at what I went through and look at how I've come out of that. And that's what life should be about. Life should be about going through life just within a journey and looking back and saying, wow, look at what God did and look what I have now. Yeah. So... Just to kind of wrap things up, I know we're, we're just throwing we're shotgun stuff out at you guys, and um, 
we'll hopefully um, come back and, and kind of pinpoint some of these things as again as we discover them um, as we you know uh, get deeper in, in some of the truths of uh, God's kingdom um, but if I could wrap it up by giving you four things um, thinking about the kingdom as a literal government one it has a king that that's Jesus Christ he is our king um, two it has subjects. If you have a kingdom, you have to have subjects. That's where we come in. People of all nations, God's people. You know, you know when we when we say I'm a Christian, I believe in, in uh, the work of atonement that Jesus did, um, and I have salvation. I'm part of the kingdom, and now that places a responsibility. You can't just um, be in the kingdom and not do anything, right? Uh, it's like being. I think of it as being in the military. You sign up for the military, they're going to put you to work. You can't just stand around, wear all the stuff, and get all the accolades. Everything's fine. They, they train you because there's a specific task to, to, to be done. And the kingdom is no different. As a subject of the kingdom, there is a requirement, a demand, if you will, that's placed upon each and every one of our lives. Um, and that goes in line with what God has called us and created us each individually to do. Um, thirdly, the, king, the kingdom has a law, right? Um, in the United States, we have laws that we're governed by. Even in our respective states, we have laws that, that govern the people. And the kingdom is no different. That's what the Bible is all about. It's all about, that's our constitution. It's the laws that govern, uh, govern how God's people um, live, live and interact. And then the territory. Where is God's kingdom territory? Well, quite frankly, it's your sphere of influence. If God has given you the Spirit, if the Holy Spirit lives within you and you are a kingdom citizen, then your sphere of influence, you're bringing the kingdom territory to that, to that area of, of influence. And as, again, it's uh, not limited to any ethnic group or any population. If anybody in the world is eligible to be a part of this kingdom, therefore the kingdom extends to the entire earth. It's just up to us to manifest it. It's up to us to use our influence to bring God's kingdom to the structures, the spheres, the territories of earth. Um, and just on what Luther said when he talked about the subjects, every kingdom has subjects. Well, what sets this kingdom apart from any earthly kingdom is the fact that we're family, we're sons and daughters. Not only are we sons, first his kingdom all these things will be added to you so the more that you begin to search and seek God will show you and he will reveal to you what your specific purpose is on this earth so I know that's a lot to take in in, in one small sitting like this but again we'll try to come back with some more for you guys and uh, just just keep growing and learning together so until then uh, be strong and we'll see you on the other side